thoughts and emotions, the waves and the ocean. Today, we will continue to talk about thoughts and emotions. When people begin to meditate, they often say that their thoughts are running riot and have become wilder than ever before. But I reassure them that this is a good sign. Far from meaning that your thoughts have become wilder, it shows that you have become quieter and more alert. It's like an organisation or a company that used to have no gatekeeper at the entrance. Good and bad people would come and go freely. Since nobody was watching, you have no idea who came and went and how many people came and went. But now, with a gatekeeper, you can see whoever enters and exits clearly. Even an ant crawling by can be seen. Having the gatekeeper is like being able to notice and be aware of our coarse thoughts and emotions. Our awareness is like the gatekeeper. As our awareness increases, it's as if the gatekeeper has upgraded. What does the gatekeeper upgrade into? He upgrades into a gate deity. A gate deity is far more advanced than a gatekeeper as he can even see invisible beings such as ghosts passing by. At this point, you are finally aware of just how noisy your thoughts have always been. Don't be disheartened or give up. Whatever arises, just keep being at present. It's like being a gatekeeper. You don't block whoever comes, nor do you greet and welcome whoever comes. The gatekeeper simply watches whoever comes and goes at the entrance. He stops bad guys, but doesn't interfere ordinary people or staff. Our awareness is like a gatekeeper just watching and staying alert. Of course, a gatekeeper must not fall asleep or leave his post to do something else. This means we need to maintain our awareness. When we begin to meditate, even in the midst of all the confusion, which means scattered thoughts, we should focus our attention on the breath or a mantra. Beginners can practice mindful breathing or chanting mantras to bring your mind back. If you can mindfully observe, you can focus your attention on where the thoughts arise and look at it. This is an advanced method. In the ancient meditation instructions, it is said that at the beginning, thoughts will arise one after another. Thoughts are the source of mental distractions. Thoughts are not yet the actual thinking itself. Actual thinking is mental distractions. The arising of a thought is like a mouse popping its head out of a mouse hole. We need to watch at the entrance like a cat. As soon as the mouse's head appears, you catch it. When you begin to meditate, your awareness should be like a cat watching a mouse hole. Once a mouse's head appears, you catch it. In the beginning, there can be an overwhelming amount of scattered and rapid thoughts surging like tides. Moreover, in the beginning, the mindfulness is not strong enough and the awareness is slow, which can lead to a feeling of exhaustion. Some people may even feel frustrated and chaotic. Thoughts constantly arise one after another, uninterrupted, like a steep mountain waterfall flowing rapidly. At that point, you can only take your time. Being impatient won't help. Gradually, as you perfect meditation, thoughts become like the water in a deep, narrow gorge. They slow down, no longer like a waterfall, but are still pretty fast. Gradually, thoughts flow even slower, like a great river slowly winding its way down to the sea. 
Finally, the mind becomes like a still and placid ocean, which means the water has returned to the ocean. The ocean is ruffled by only the occasional ripple or wave. Of course, the intensity of the waves vary from person to person. In the ordinary mind, we perceive the stream of thoughts as continuous, but in reality, this is not the case. We will discover for ourselves that there is a gap between each thought. When our awareness is strong, we can notice these gaps, and as a result, the thoughts also slow down. When the past thought is past, and the future thought not yet arisen, you will always find a gap. When the past thought has passed, and the future thought has not yet arisen, gradually we will feel the gap in between. Our minds start to become boundless and spacious, and our thoughts become less and less, like coming to the ocean. The gaps between thoughts become wider and wider. The state when the previous thought has just stopped and the next thought has not yet arisen will gradually appear. Slowly, you will notice the gap between the past thought that has ceased and the future thought that has not yet arisen. Your awareness will notice it. It's like a moving lamp. When its speed is extremely fast, it appears as a ribbon of light without any gaps. Only when its speed slows down can we see the gaps in between. Of course, the past thought is past and the future thought not yet arisen is still a state of ignorance. In order to penetrate this ignorance, we need a calmer mind and deeper concentration. When coarse delusions are absent, you will notice coarse thoughts. When coarse thoughts are absent, you will notice subtle thoughts. As your concentration deepens, when subtle thoughts are absent, you will notice even subtler thoughts. When the subtlest thoughts are absent and all wandering thoughts are gone, the first five consciousnesses, as well as the sixth consciousness, all stop working and the attachment to self in person in the seventh consciousness appears. The ignorance appears. If the attachment to self in person is penetrated, the attachment to self in phenomena in the seventh consciousness will appear, which is another layer of ignorance. If the attachment to self in phenomena is penetrated, the fundamental ignorance in the eighth consciousness will appear. This is the process of meditation. In the past, practitioners in the Zen tradition engaged in this introspection, continuously watching and cutting off layers of thoughts. As your concentration deepens, you will see increasingly subtle scattered thoughts and even the gaps between the thoughts. Beginners may think that when they meditate, there should be no thoughts and emotions at all. And when thoughts and emotions do arise, they become annoyed and think they have failed. However, this is not the case. As long as you have a mind, there will be thoughts and emotions. Just as the ocean has waves or the sun has rays, so the mind's own radiance is its thoughts and emotions. Of course, thoughts are not necessarily deluded. When thoughts, distractions and emotions weaken or slow down, the mind is still working, but its radiance gradually transforms into wisdom. As discrimination diminishes, wisdom increases. The consciousness turns into wisdom. The sixth consciousness turns into the discriminating wisdom, which is also the mind's function. The seventh consciousness, 
self-attachment, turns into the wisdom of equality, which can transform self-attachment. Previously, our self-attachment is always there, clinging to the existence of a self. After eradicating self-attachment through meditation, the seventh consciousness will turn into the wisdom of equality. It's still working, as where there is a mind, there is bound to be its function. When the eighth consciousness, the fundamental ignorance, is penetrated, the true mind will appear. But even when the true mind appears, it's still functioning. The functioning of the true mind is called wondrous existence in true emptiness. True emptiness will definitely give rise to wondrous existence. True emptiness and wondrous existence are non-dual. Mere nothingness cannot give rise to wondrous existence. Those that don't arise from true emptiness are false existence, deluded existence also known as illusory existence. They don't arise from our true nature. They are mixed with ignorance, so it's also functioning. Their function is false existence, deluded existence, and illusory existence. Hence, it's still functioning. Just as the ocean has waves, or the sun has rays, the ocean has waves, Yet, the ocean is not particularly disturbed by them. Our true nature is also like this. The nature of the mind has its wondrous uses, yet it is not disturbed by these wondrous uses. The waves are the very nature of the ocean. Where there is an ocean, there are bound to be waves. When waves arise, they eventually return to the ocean. Waves arise from the ocean and return to the ocean. Our thoughts are also the same. The wondrous uses arise from true emptiness and ultimately return to it. The wondrous uses are limitless. Buddhas and Buddhasattvas can manifest all forms and all wondrous existence. This wondrous existence is different from the three realms of existence in samsara, which arise from the functioning of sentient beings' minds. The wondrous existence arises from the true mind in an illusory way, without any ignorance or attachment. Buddhas and Buddhasattvas have countless emanation bodies, countless majestic pure lands, and bliss bodies, Sambhogakaya, all of which are the manifestations of their wondrous existence. Ordinary beings have strong attachment to self and phenomena, as well as karmic obstacles, afflictive obscurations, and cognitive obscurations. They prevent us from freely manifesting and transforming and keep us bound by karma. As a result, immeasurable suffering of suffering, suffering of change and pervasive suffering arise beyond our control. Various discrimination, delusions and scattered thoughts arise, even leading to creating karma. The thoughts and emotions of ordinary beings are also the radiance and expression of the very nature of the mind, although mixed with ignorance, karma and afflictions. Whatever arises, don't see it as a particular problem and don't worry. If you don't impulsively react, don't care about it. If you are only patient, it will once again settle into its essential nature. Being patient is very important. Regarding your thoughts and emotions, cultivate the habit of being patient and stay mindful. Of course, being patient is an advanced method which doesn't work for beginners. Beginners must apply antidotes. 
If you don't apply antidotes to afflictions such as greed, anger, jealousy, arrogance and ego, you can't stop them. Like waves in the ocean, they will grow. Therefore, being patient doesn't work for beginners, as it is an advanced method, but it's fine to know it beforehand. When you have few afflictions, or when you meditate, you can occasionally try this method to see if you can calm down. The key is to understand that thoughts and emotions come from the very nature of our mind. When you have this understanding, then rising thoughts only enhance your practice. You will no longer fear or reject thoughts, nor will you worry about them. If you understand what they intrinsically are, the radiance of the nature of your mind, then your thoughts will not hinder your practice. We can be patient with our subtle thoughts and emotions and be aware of their arising and ceasing. So have a spacious, open and compassionate attitude toward your thoughts and emotions because in fact your thoughts are your family, your mind's function. Before them, we should be like an old wise man watching a child play. We often wonder what to do about negativity or certain troubling emotions. In the spaciousness of meditation, you can view your thoughts and emotions with a totally unbiased attitude. This requires a broad mind and great wisdom. At this point, your attitude changes. Sometimes, afflictions and emotions may be strong, but your mind and wisdom are greater, allowing you to embrace them. So, it depends on yourself. If your mind is really like an ocean, then you have nothing to fear, even in great storms. But if you are just a little boat, then you will be afraid. When storms come, you will be terrified. How big is your mind? Is it like a boat or like the ocean? This needs wisdom. When your wisdom arises, your attitude will be different. When your attitude changes, then the whole atmosphere of your mind changes. Your attitude is determined by your understanding and view. When you have the right view, you naturally have the right attitude. With this right attitude, the whole atmosphere of your mind changes. Even the very nature of your thoughts and emotions changes. When you become more agreeable, then they do. Don't worry or fear your thoughts and emotions, like an old wise man watching a child play. This attitude is different. If you have no difficulty with them, they will have no difficulty with you either. So, whatever thoughts and emotions arise, allow them to rise and settle, like the waves in the ocean. Whatever you find yourself thinking, let that thought rise and settle. Of course, beginners can use this method to deal with subtle thoughts and emotions. However, this doesn't work for strong greed and anger, which are like tsunami. If you don't quickly escape or find a way to deal with it, the waves will swallow you or even kill you. These strong afflictions are not small waves that come and go. When a small wave comes, you may stand by the shore, let it wet your feet and find it enjoyable. If you are just a boat, and boats come in different sizes, and you have set sail and find yourself in the ocean, then you need to pay attention to both the size of the waves and the size of the boat. Too big wave and too small boat are both risky. At this point, simply being patient doesn't work. Why? Because your mind is not yet like the ocean. 
you are just a boat. As beginners, we need to stay away from challenging circumstances and protect ourselves with precepts. Then during meditation, we need to be mindful and meditate on no self in person and no self in phenomena to deal with afflictive obscurations and cognitive obscurations. These are the methods we currently use. This is inevitable because your mind is not broad enough, you haven't turned on great wisdom, and you don't know how to deal with big waves. For enlightened Zen masters, their minds have become like the boundless ocean through practice. So even in great storms, they are fearless. No matter how big the storms, they return to their true nature. This is a high spiritual attainment, so we cannot compare ourselves to them. Don't say, I can also do it. You may think you have a high spiritual attainment, but in reality, you are just a boat. Well, being a boat is already good. Some people are just a small canoe, which is even more dangerous. Let your thoughts rise and settle. Don't constrain it, grasp at it, feed it, or indulge it. Be patient, don't cling to it, and don't try to solidify it. Neither follow thoughts, nor invite them. Be like the ocean, looking at its own waves, letting them come and go. Sometimes you can visualize your mind as a blue sky, looking down at passing clouds and all illusions, including your emotions, thoughts and distractions. This visualization method is pretty good. Our mind is like the boundless sky, looking down at everything and embracing whatever happens, whether on earth or in the sky. If you visualize your mind as the sky in this way, you'll soon find that thoughts are like the wind. They come and go. Don't think about thoughts and don't have any emotion or attachment to them. Instead, allow them to flow through the mind while keeping your mind free of afterthoughts. Some people who have heavy karmic obstacles may daydream for a long time. When they wake up, half an hour may have already passed. You may have been lost in your thoughts for a long time before realizing I was caught up in daydreaming. What's more, some people may even be trapped in an emotion or a situation for days and cannot find a way out. In such cases, we need to apply antidotes. It's because you are too narrow-minded, so even a tiny emotion will bother you for a long time. Instead of repenting, you are complaining and finding faults in others. Your karmic obstacles are so heavy. How can you progress in spiritual practice? So, being patient doesn't work for you. As mentioned earlier, thoughts can be divided into coarse thoughts, subtle thoughts and subtler attachments. After coarse wandering thoughts disappear, you may think there are no more thoughts. However, if you calm your mind further, you will discover subtler thoughts and mental distractions. By penetrating layer by layer as you progress to a state where there are no more distractions, not even the slightest ones, ignorance will appear. There are several layers of ignorance. First is the attachment to self in person. When penetrated, the attachment to self in phenomena will appear. When the attachment to self in phenomena is penetrated, the fundamental ignorance will appear. Those with sharp faculties can penetrate the fundamental ignorance and get enlightened, but that is a later story. Of course, when the fundamental ignorance appears, you need guidance from your spiritual mentor or an enlightened being. 
If your afflictive obscurations, karmic obstacles and cognitive obscurations are heavy, like an iron plate, then no matter how much I strike it, it will be useless. If your afflictive and cognitive obscurations have become as thin as window paper through long-term practice, leaving only the final layer of ignorance, then at that point, with a little guidance from me, you can easily penetrate it. After the final layer of ignorance is eradicated, your true nature will appear. Therefore, the entire process of our meditation is about allowing thoughts to gradually slow down, making the gaps between them more and more apparent. Only after the gaps have become apparent can we penetrate the ignorance. If there is no gap, you won't be able to see the ignorance at all. All you see are afflictions and scattered thoughts, whether coarse or subtle. In such a state, you cannot see any gap or ignorance at all. Hence, only when there are no more scattered thoughts will the attachment to self in person and self in phenomena appear. All right, that's all for today.